coming here from different homes in Oakland, California, where it's finally starting to feel a little bit like fall. Um, Yay! Yes. <laughs> so I'm Wanda, and you can find me on Ravelry as Wadi Watts, and you can find me on Instagram as Zest in Class. And I'm Heather, and I'm on Ravelry as Heather T, and Instagram as Heather T3. And I think this is episode 18. I don't know if you said that. I didn't, so thank you. So welcome back, everyone, for another episode. We appreciate the people who watch us on a regular basis. We appreciate our new subscribers and everyone who's joined this community. Um, I hope that this podcast puts you in a knit state of mind. Whatever that might mean for you, it means different things for different people at different points in time. So we have some yep. projects to share with you this week. Um, I don't have any FOs. Heather, do you have any FOs? Um, I do have an FO and I also have the sweater I'm wearing and you're wearing something you made also, right? Yes, and we, I, we both have some whips. So that's kind of the lineup for the day. I can share really quickly what I'm wearing. It's one of the knits I made for the summer ready make along, trying to get it in while I still can wear my short sleeves. Um, so this is the Bellis Tee by Fiber Tales. Her name is Larka. She's a designer and um, I test knit this tee for her. And I figured it's perfect for a nice fall day with some overalls. We're gonna go hang out, take a walk a little bit later. So um, it's quite fitting. Yeah, it looks great with the overalls. Thank you. I yeah. also have my Nanaimo handy. It goes everywhere with me right now. It's the perfect weather. And we do have, it's a little chilly out, but mm -hmm. uh, it's comfortable right now, so. Yeah, it's kind of perfect because so I'm wearing like a longer sleeved sweater and I'm not too hot, but I wasn't too cold earlier when I just had a t-shirt on. So it's like that in between. Yeah. Uh, I am wearing the Alaska sweater by Camille Descoteau, and I'll stand up. Um, you may have seen this. There's also a hat. It has this beautiful um, tree color work on it. Um, and I knit this out of the called for yarn, called for colors, knit pick city tweed DK, um, Tahitian pearl, and the black color is obsidian. Um, and it was funny, I was looking up today to get the yarn color details. And I saw that this was the most liked sweater project of mine that I have up on Ravelry. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. That's <laughs> lovely. Yeah. <laughs> your trees on your sweater, it goes really well with my background right now. Yeah, <laughs> it does. It looks like you have, well, do you have actually any, oh, you do have some pine trees back there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> variety back there. Yeah. All right, finished objects. Finished objects. Well, I kind of have, I have one and a half. Um, I have these shorty socks are finished that I made out of um, yarn scraps. Um, so there's two of them and the ends are all woven in. They were actually done last time we recorded, but the ends weren't woven in. So I didn't <laughs> show them. Um, I know that the blue yarn is from Oink Pigments, but I have no idea where the multicolored yarn is from, but excited to be able to wear these. Yay, so you haven't worn them yet. I haven't worn them yet. I just finally woven the ends a couple of days ago because I was like, this is ridiculous. They've been sitting around for like a month without the yeah. ends woven in. <laughs> well, it'll be a nice treat when you get to wear them. Yeah, totally. Um, and then I finished one each of these, um, shorty socks that I'm making for my friend Tammy's daughters. So I finished one each and I just need to get started on the second one. So okay. these are just plain vanilla socks, uh, 56 stitches on a size zero, uh, Limeade and Jamboree from Felici. So it's almost, it could be a finished object except right. <laughs> not the matching pair of socks. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, I love those, those are great. Yeah, they're fun. They've just been kind of my in-between when I just need a little something easy to knit on, but. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any more socks? Um, I don't have any more socks. I have a large, oh, oh, I do have one other finished thing though. That's not knitting. So I'll show that real quick. That's okay. okay. Um, 
I haven't actually been cross stitching very much at all lately, but I did. Um, so if you've been watching us for a while or have gone back and watched previous episodes last year at this time, I was working on the Brooks books advent animals. And I did like, I think I did the first 21 before Christmas last year. And I um, just finished this one, which is number 23 this week because I realized I needed to get going on the last one. So again, this is the Brooks Books Advent Animals. It's free um, if you Google that and I'll link it also in the show notes. But um, yeah, that's the alligator or the crocodile. I don't really know the difference. <laughs> and I also finished probably maybe about a month ago. I had finished number 22. Nice. Yeah. I like those. I have forgotten about them. It's good to get yeah. updates. Yeah, so I thought people might want to see. I So I have 24 going now, and then I'm going to send them all off to my mom has all the rest of them, because we were going to work together this summer on sewing them into pouches. So I'll send them all to her, and then we'll figure out later how to finish them. Nice, nice. Yeah. Good. Right on time with it. Yeah. So no more sock whips. Do you have some socks? Yeah, I, I'm going to give an update on my socks. Um I've just been making a little bit of progress on all of my projects, so I'm not going to spend too much time on them, but I wanted to give you an update on the socks that my two at a time socks. So these are my two at a time self-striping socks using Fibelia yarn. I've mentioned them previously, and they're a gift knit for my partner's son for Christmas. So mm -hmm. just trying to get these done in time. This is where I am. Um, he has pretty big feet, so, um, I'm knitting the longest foot I've had to knit <laughs> so far. Um, but again, these are really enjoyable, nice to take in the car while watching movies, etc. Um, I think the last time I showed these, I had done, I don't know, here we go. I had mm -hmm. done the heels, I had finished the mm -hmm. toe flap, and so you can see... You're always so good about putting them on your hand, but you can see the progress yeah. on the foot so far. So yeah, that's where I am. Yeah, and I, you're realized, there. I realized there are a couple of, of like sock cows and like fall cows. And these are the, aren't these the perfect Halloween socks? Mm -hmm. They are, they really are. They are, it's funny because I wouldn't have thought of that until you said it, but they are like Halloween without being too Halloween. Yeah. And I, you know, I've been working on these, but maybe it's because Halloween's getting closer and it occurred to me this week. I was like, these are Halloween socks, but whatever. <laughs> His favorite color is orange. So that's the yeah. update on those. So I hope to finish those within, by the end of this month, because I have to cast on the pair for his brother. Yeah. Um, and get those done by Christmas as well. And then an update on my now and next, um, not to far but I showed you last week I had finished this pair and so I started this pair so the cuff is done mm -hmm. and I've started the pattern and it's so nice to sorry my color is messing up the that's better the lighting yeah, that lo looks accurate to me mm -hmm. yeah. so um it was nice casting these on and getting these going again I was hanging out with um the boys and so I couldn't quite work on the other socks in, in front of yeah. the oldest. So I was like, let me cast these on and I can work on these when I'm around them and I don't yeah. want them bulky if we're like driving or out and about. So I have those and it was just I was just reminded of and I texted you earlier this week too, just there's something about that yarn, the springiness, and we mm -hmm. haven't been able to really figure it out. But um, it was nice casting those on and being reminded of the joy of both the pattern. Um, mm -hmm. It's interesting enough, but simple and easy to follow. And then the yarn, which is Patton's Croy FX, it, I swear it has this, it, it has a give to it. So it's very comfortable knitting. Um, and I realized the difference with this yarn and other fingering yarn in terms of my vision. Um, it's a little bit heavy, mm -hmm. so it's just more enjoyable yeah. when I can see the yarn a bit better. That's something I'm realizing more and more. But yeah, so those yeah. are the now and next socks by Hay Brownberry. 
Nice. And you know what I forgot to say about the um, socks for the girls is that I did the Finchley graft on those. Oh, so? Yeah, so. <laughs> so my verdict is I, I do like it. Um, and it is definitely like fewer steps. Mm -hmm. for sure. Like it's very intuitive and it, it makes sense. Um, I don't mind doing Kitchener because I've been doing Kitchener for so long that it's like routine for me. And I honestly have to say, turning the sock inside out, it takes like no time at all. But I think because you have to do that, I'll probably keep doing Kitchener. <laughs> And that just goes to show we all have our yeah. preferences, right? Yeah. Because yeah. oh. I was, I it was like, oh, I have to turn the sock inside out to do this thing. But yeah. once I got the sock inside out, I did really appreciate how quick it went and how, I mean, it looks basically the same. At, I mean, you said this, but just to yeah. confirm, it does look the same as I could see myself, I think, using that um, to graft. Well, two things. One is I'm curious if you can use it to do um, a tubular bind off because a tubular bind off is basically just Kitchener stitch. And so I feel like I wanna investigate whether you could use the Finchley graph for a tubular bind off. So that's a question I have because I don't like doing a tubular bind off with Kitchener. And then I also feel like I would use the Finchley graft if I was grafting a really large area. Like if I had was repairing a sweater or something and had to separate two like bigger parts and graft them together, I feel like I would do it because I just think it's there's less room for error. Yeah, yeah. So it's all about strategy and having the range of options and being able to decide and play with it accordingly, right? But I'm yeah. glad, I'm glad you tried it. I'm glad you gave it a try. Yeah. So yeah, and I, I yeah, thank you to uh, Hey Brownberry for posting that up so everybody could have access to it because I had never heard of it before. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, you know, that's news to me. I think of you as hearing about everything, so. <laughs> um, well, I have quite a parade of things that I've worked on. This is um, scattered knit state of mind for me this week. <laughs> yeah, that's the perfect episode um, title, scattered knit state of mind. <laughs> Um, should I get started? Yeah, um, I have two. So okay. I don't know if you want to share some and I share those or I share two and then you you take you take over the show. Uh, I'll share some and then you share those. Okay. Okay. Also, I'm having a chair issue here. My chair cushion has come out somehow. So excuse me for a moment while I fix that. Okay. So I won't fall down. Okay, so after our last episode, um, we had talked about crochet a lot. And so then all I wanted to do was crochet. So I cast on a granny square blanket. And this is what I have so far. Oh, nice. So this is the leftovers from a previous crochet. And uh, yeah. One other color that wasn't in that blanket was gold. Cool. You, you were freezing a bit, so. Oh, sorry. Um, so that yeah, this is the leftovers from my previous blanket, and then with the addition of this gold color. And I actually started, and I got about this much done. And then I didn't like how I had done the colors, so I had been doing the colors in like more of a regular repeat, mm -hmm. and. It ended up with them stacking up in a way I just didn't like. So I ripped the whole thing out and started again. And then I got here again. <laughs> um, but this is the Mustard Granny Square by Amanda Hurl. Um, honestly, it's just a granny square. She does give a few good tips about how to keep it from going all wonky. But um, and it's Debbie Bliss, Bliss, Cash Marino, Aaron. So I worked on this pretty much only exclusively for like a week. Oh, um, nice. But that was a third of our time away from each other. Yeah. <laughs> and there doesn't seem like there's much to show for, but that's because I basically did it twice. Well, that's a lot to me. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then I said, okay, I got to buckle down and get my mom's sweater done. Mm -hmm. So I got close. It's not done yet. Want, want. I will explain why. Uh, <laughs> so this is Apogean by Marie Green. 
Um, it is almost finished. So it's all bound off on the bottom. Both sleeves are done now. Um, the yarn is Madeline Tosh Sock in the color Cousteau. Let's see, that's pretty good right there. Yeah, I see it better. Um, and then the ribbing is a navy. Let's see if you can kind of see it here. Um, so I finished the last sleeve maybe on like Sunday or Monday, or I guess on Monday, because I think you and I were knitting together on Monday and I was still working on it. So I finished the last sleeve on Monday. And then what's left is to pick up the neckband here. It's kind of hard to see because it's dark. So this all has to get picked up with the navy. Mm -hmm. um, and just by the time I get to knitting at night, it's dark because oh, it's getting yeah. dark earlier now. And then my eyes are kind of tired from zooming all day. And I just didn't trust myself because it's so visible. It's right there in the front of the sweater. And I was worried that I would not pick it up well and it would be all wonky and then I'd have to rip it out and make holes. And so I just decided to wait till the weekend when I could do it during the day. So tomorrow morning when I have good light, I'm gonna sit down and pick up the neckband and then it should just take a day or two to finish and block it. So, so it'll definitely be done by the next episode. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it will. And I'm, I have been worried all along that it's not going to fit. Um, I was telling Wanda that it's so, it's really hard knitting a sweater for an adult that is a smaller size than you, or this is what I'm finding because I've knit sweaters for kids, obviously, but kids, I feel like I just always overestimate the size and then they'll grow into it. But this is for an adult, so they're not, their body, they're not gonna grow into it. So I have to make it the right size. But because my mom is smaller than me, I can't really try it on to see if it's fitting. So it's very stressful. But I did finally put it on after I um, bound off the second sleeve. And it does like, it fits me like a sausage casing, but it did go on, which did confirm that the sleeves are gonna fit. And I wasn't wrong about my gauge calculations. The body should fit her, so. That put my mind at ease. I knew you were concerned about that, so I'm glad it worked out. Yeah. So anyway, almost done. I'm excited about that. And then I'll show two more before I pause. Um, one of our viewers, um, I wrote down her name, Adriel of Wax and Skeen, posted that she had been watching one of our older episodes and seeing that we were both working on Plumpy. Oh, yeah. By so then I was like, okay, that episode, which was probably in like November or December is probably the last time I had it out of the bag. <laughs> so I was like, let me get this out. So I got it out and just looked at what the situation was. So here's what it looks like now. Oh, wow. Um, and it, I haven't done very much. I've just done this little section here. I saw so I only did like five or six rows, but, um, I was like, this is so close to being done. I think I thought it was farther from being done. Mm -hmm. So this is all kinds of different, mostly sport and DK and a few fingering weight scraps. Um, this is the front, but I actually kind of like the back better, but anyway, um, yeah, so I got it out. I did a few rows and then I got tired of it, <laughs> but it's out now. It's out in the living room. So I'm hoping I'll finish it soon. So what's left after these, I ha it's like this really dark navy color and like a gray blue right now that I'm using. And then I have, then I'm going to put in this kind of greenish gray blue and then end with that and I have some red so this is going to be at the end oh nice so that's and then that's it and then that's it all right so that's yeah. done by the next episode too <laughs> I mean maybe I think I have like 50 rows left but you know brioche it's like two, every row is two rows yeah I'm so. just joking yeah. <laughs> setting ridiculous expectations for you. <laughs> well, I'll talk about more in plans. I did do some calculations about how long it's going to take me to get all this done. But anyway, the so then I got tired of that. So then I was like, well, let me pick up 
Astragal. Um, so Astragal is by Einar Birkenbaeva. It's the finished sweater. Oh, I don't, I should have flagged it. I didn't flag a picture of the finished sweater. Um, here it is. The finished sweater looks like this. Mm -hmm. um, it has that like leaf yoke um, and it's from Pom Pom, the sea change issue. Um, so I got the yoke almost finished but then I had to put this project in timeout <laughs> for reasons that I will explain momentarily. Okay, so I'm knitting this out of Queensland collection dungarees, which is 100% recycled cotton or 99% recycled cotton or something like that. 95% recycled cotton. Um, so I love the color. Um, I think that's gonna look really nice. Mm -hmm. And I knit it out of cotton because it's like three quartered sleeves and kind of cropped. I thought it would be a good kind of like fall, summer to fall kind of piece to wear. Yeah. But two things. So the second thing is that the designer recently posted on Instagram how she's revising the, just making a few changes to the pattern to update it. And in that post, she was like, oh, and you might want to use a yarn that's like, poofy and sticky because of the way the increases work, it'll just look better. And of course I'm using like a smooth cotton yarn. So I was like, I mean, the, if I would have looked at the yarn it's designed in, I should have known better, but anyway, um, so that's, but I, st I think it looks pretty good and the gauge is pretty tight because the yarn is a little thicker than I think the yarn the pattern was designed in. So the issue she said is that the increases will have a little hole Oh, and I don't really see that that much now. So I'm hoping it's going to be okay when I block it. Yeah, because your stitch definition looks good. I'm yeah. Not, yeah. So the second issue is that my gauge swatch was a lie. So I, I did a gauge swatch and I thought the gauge was going to be bigger than it is because I did the gauge swatch all knitting because I've seen people say that they knit the top part of this right side out. And then when they get to the part that's all purling, they turn it inside out and knit. Mm -hmm. But my knit gauge and my purl gauge are a little bit different, especially in the round. My purl gauge is tighter. So I realized when I got to the place where I could have turned it inside out, that if I turned it inside out and started knitting, it was gonna be really noticeable, the gauge difference. So I thought, okay, well, let me just keep purling. That's fine. It's kind of meditative and it'll maybe, you know, teach me to love purling more than I do right now. Um, and I've actually really been enjoying the purling. It's been fun. So, but then I realized that the sweater was going to be too small because I had calculated based on my knit gauge and not my purl gauge. Right. Yeah. So what I decided to do is just do some additional increases. The top does fit me. Um, I have seen people say the top seemed a little big. Sometimes I think that's something that she changed in the new edition of the pattern. So the top actually fits me really nicely. I tried it on. Um, so I just decided to do some extra increases until it gets to be the size I want it to be. And um, did I free again? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? You're back. Okay. <laughs> um, so I just decided to do some extra increases to get it to be the size that I want. But um, anyway, then I got tired of doing the math to figure out how many extra increases I needed to do. So I put it to the side. <laughs> that, that sounds like quite the adventure. Yeah. <laughs> it will get done though, because I love, I li really like how the pattern looks with this yarn because I think the benefit of using that slippery yarn is that the pattern really stands out. Um, so I'm going to keep going on it. It just might not get done that yeah. soon. All right. So let's see some of yours. I actually, I'm only going to share one, um, because the other, I don't know. It's just not as you've seen it. I'll make more progress and I'll share when I make more progress on that one. Okay. Um, but I do have a new whip. And I have the printout of it. It's the Favo sweater. I've mentioned it as planned. So this is the Favo sweater by Fiber Tales, the same designer of this summer tee. 
the Bellis T. And um, so I had picked that out as a design. It's kind of, uh, you know, you test for her, she gives you a free design. So I picked that one out. And so I casted that on and um, I'm loving it. So she says in the design, it's knit in pieces. So the front piece, the back piece, and mm -hmm. it's in, then she suggests you block it. You knit the sleeve separately as well. I don't want to give too much away. And so because this was going to be my first time doing that honeycomb brioche, I started with the back piece mm -hmm. because there are a couple of different charts and this one just requires the two charts. So favo, I forget the language, but it's honeycomb brioche. Favo means honeycomb. Oh, okay. In Danish? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> just get that wrong honeycomb in italian actually oh and okay that's funny <laughs> all right so i'm knitting this and um actually yeah let me talk about this before no do i want to share the sweater first i don't know these are my yarns um perfect for fall it's in our color family so this is knitting for olive rust and then this is quentin co um what's the weight the worsted weight mm -hmm. in their fox color and so i was concerned about how they would knit up together you can't really tell the difference between those mm -hmm. shades like that um it looks like the mohair is a little more reddish right the mohair is it's more peaches like oh, okay it feels more you know, I usually like golden undertones. And so when you're ordering on online, and I talked about this before, how I ended up having to decide on colors. Um, and I usually like a little bit more deep gold, but I'm liking how it turns out together. So I've just been working on the back piece. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. And you'll see it's a bit more bulky in the middle because the way this pattern works is it's like two rows of the, what would you call this, stockinette mm -hmm. <laughs> to the honeycomb brioche, right? Mm -hmm. But she says mm -hmm. it's going to block out. It's meant to be a crop sweater. I'm going to make it a little bit longer than the pattern calls for, but I'll hold it up so you can see how the mohair looks with the yarn a little bit better. And um, it looks great. You can't even really tell. It's like it blends together nicely. It blends together amazingly. And I love this pattern, at least the back panel, because it's pretty easy to follow. The front has cables and such, so we'll see. But it's been really addictive. Honeycomb brioche is amazing. Um, just the way you work it, I don't know. Uh, is it the same where you have to do each row? No, it wouldn't be because they were just using one color of yarn. Yeah, it's, it is two per row. Mm -hmm. Two, it's like a two-step process. Right. It is a two-step process, but it's, it just feels easier than brioche and to keep track of what you're doing. Um, it's pretty easy to memorize and it looks amazing and it feels amazing too. So learned a couple of new things with this knit. German twisted cast on down here. Give mm -hmm. give. Um, and then this is just two by two ribbing. And um, the honeycomb brioche is new for me as well. So I'm working the back panel. I'm going a bit longer than what she suggests for my size, but basically I'll be measuring this to be about um, 21 inches. Okay, so, yeah. And then I'll start on the sleeve. I'll start on the shoulders. Mm -hmm. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, the one thing I was going to say about it is, you know, I had a moment where it's a little bit bittersweet working on this. And that was just kind of, you know, what happens when you go on Instagram and noticing a post from a designer by um, the name of Layla Raven. Um, and she just had some some issues with Quince & Co, the, the yarn company for this project and um, her design, she was an employee there and just, you know, trying to gain royalties and the rights to one, one, of, one, 
her patterns in particular and asking them to no longer sell it. And so that was really disappointing to hear about. Um, and particularly with her being a woman of color and knowing just issues in the fiber community and making connections to that. Um, and so I'm going to, I obviously, if you all recall, I have another project where I'm using Clinton Co. And I've enjoyed um, working with that yarn, but I don't, I mean, I don't know how this issue is going to pan out, but based on what I've seen and read, I can't bring myself to buy more yarn from them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to finish these projects and, um, you know, I love the patterns. I already have the yarn, et cetera, but it's just disappointing and yeah. it's not surprising. It's a big issue, not only in the fiber industry and almost, I mean, in our society at large and thus every <laughs> industry mm -hmm. but so that's where I am with it having so much joy with the pattern but then this bittersweet experience knowing what's going on with the yarn company but yeah 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 I felt the same way when I saw that on Instagram because I I don't really have like Quince and Co in my stash I think I pretty much used all of it that I had from before but I do have a few sweaters knit out of it and it's just disappointing to you know find out that a company that you thought was doing good things is maybe not treating their employees very well. And um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know that I'll be buying anything from them in the near future either. Yeah. Um, but I did do those. I did buy, um, I did um, investigate. I had a lot of Leela Ravens patterns in my queue because I love her design aesthetic. And a lot of them were, were through Quince, but I did buy a few that were not, that were either independently or through other yarn companies. Um, and one of them I actually bought some yarn for, so I'm hoping to cast that on soon, just to think of how we can continue to support independent designers um, yep. and support. Because I think to me, part of what it illuminates is the issue in the fiber industry of um, kind of independent, how designers can make a living, right? Um, and there's different pathways, right? There's being independent and there's designing for a company and both of them have their pros and cons, but depending on how the yarn company does business, I think there can be a lot of downside for designers to do that. Or it's, that's at least what it sounds like to me. I don't really know, but yeah. yeah. I think that connects to something else that, I mean, I hear you and I think that's a really good strategy. Um, you know, just knowing this as well, buying directly from designers. And I think you were saying before you're even ready to cast it on, if it's a pattern that you like and you're likely to, to use it um, to go ahead and purchase it and support. And I know Leela Raven, she's, she released a, a recent pattern independently. It's a shawl um, and it's a beautiful pattern, Erin Wade. And I've been needing to get a shawl on my noodle, but it was good to see that she released something independently as well. But the, and so that connects to something else that I've been thinking about because I know there have been these issues and conversations just around like inclusivity and racism and all of that um in so many different ways right but within the the fiber industry in particular and how oftentimes I feel like the solution gets narrowed down to an issue of representation right so let's make sure we have black indigenous PO mm -hmm. designers let's make sure we have them featured in the magazines and that sort of thing, which can borderline on tokenism. And so I think one of the root of the issues is having control and power in terms of like, because we're in a capitalist society, having control of the means of production um, or the creative direction, because oftentimes it's these designers serving the purposes of a yarn company or mm -hmm. other magazine. and we're not necessarily the people who are controlling that and um, the means of production and the owners, right? We think about who has ownership rights and who benefits the most financially as well. So I think that's something else that we need to be thinking about and strategizing around mm -hmm. as well. So this just kind of yeah. started so many things. Right. right. You know, and I think it's related to our day to day because we think about this stuff within the context of like education and school mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff too. But it's just interesting to think about it within the, the knitting and, and fiber mm -hmm. as well. Um, well, the sweater is beautiful. So 
that's that's a good thing. Yeah, I'm glad it's it's working up really great. So I wonder. So the other thing you're knit working on that I'm assuming you're not showing is Mark sweater, right? Yeah, I mean that's knit with Quince and Co as well. <laughs> And, but so I'm wondering if I know um, you had texted me an update that it fits him. It does fit him. So <laughs> just want to share that with all of our viewers in case they were wondering. I don't know if I had split for the sleeves the last time I showed it. I don't think so. Yeah. I've split for the sleeves. I've knitted a couple of inches on it and it does fit him. So I will report back that so far so good. Knock on wood. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Well, I have two more. Um, so after I kind of stalled out on all the other sweaters I was working on, I picked uh, Rainier up and I got a ton of progress on Rainier. So this is Rainier um, by Kate Gagnon Osborne um, of the fiber, uh, not fiber company, of Kelbourne Woolens. Um, and the yarn is Kelbourne Woolens Scout. And I did, um, sorry, I don't want to lose all the stitches. I got to figure out how to show this. So I did uh, join the sleeves in the body and start the yoke. Wow. Um, so I'm really excited. You did make a lot of progress, even since the last time we spoke. Yeah, I think last time, last time you and I talked, I think I was somewhere like around here. Mm -hmm. In our last podcast, I think I had the sleeves and like just a little bit of the body done. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm super excited about that. I did not block the gauge swatch, which was foolish, but uh, I'm really hoping it doesn't grow too much because I think it's just the right size now. So we'll see. But so I was going, going, going on that and I've gotten now far enough on the yoke decreases that I need to switch to a shorter cable. I'm using my interchangeable carbons needles. Um, these are my favorite interchangeable needles, by the way. I love, I just love carbons needles generally, but the thing I love about the interchangeable set that they have is that the smallest size is a two and a half, um, which I really love because even if I'm knitting with DK weight yarn, I usually use like a three or a four. And so then I need like a two and a half for the ribbing and a lot of interchangeable sets don't go down that low. Um, so anyway, that's partly why I love them so much. But so I need a smaller cable. And on the smaller cable, I prefer also the shorter tips. So these are the longer tips. And I also have the shorter tips for every size. Um, so I went to go get the cable and the shorter tips. And the shorter tips for this size were missing. Oh. So I was like, where are the short size four needle tips? Yeah. So then I went like looking through my book that I keep with all my project. And then the 16 inch cable was missing too. So I was like, okay, so somewhere I'm knitting something on a 16 inch cable with a size four needle. Yeah. And so I need to figure out what that is so I can get these needle tips. So I went through my project book that I have and I was like, oh, I think that's on my Alita hat. <laughs> oh, so I um, got that out and my intention was just to get it out and put like a stopper on and um, then keep working on the sweater, but I got it out and I was like, okay. Um, it's I'm not going to say it was done. <laughs> no, but it was, I've, I've knit like two, three inches since I got it out, but I was like, this is, it's a hat. It's going to take me like two days to finish it. So I should just finish it because if I take the needles off, yeah, honestly, I'm gonna have to, am I ever going to finish it? So that will be done by next episode. Yeah. <laughs> so I started. Uh, I just put the sweater aside and decided to finish this first. It's kind of a little hard to see the pattern with yeah. the navy yarn, but um, can you put it a little bit closer? Let's just see. Oh, there we go. Yep. Yeah. Yep, you can see it. So it's that really nice twisted stitch um pattern with some increases and decreases um I of course because I don't ever follow directions it's supposed to be DK I'm knitting it with a sport weight that's actually honestly probably closer to a fingering so I think I talked about this a long time ago when I first showed it but what I did is I added additional so each of these this is each a repeat 
between the stitch markers. Mm -hmm. I added four additional stitches in the ribbing part mm -hmm. um, between the repeats to make it a little bit bigger. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that should work. So, and the yarn is Imperial Yarns Tracy 2 um, in the color navy. Nice. <clears throat> so, yeah, and I got it out. And again, this was another thing where I'm like, why did I not just finish that? Yeah, go ahead and finish that. <laughs> It'll be perfect for our fall. It's finally feeling like fall. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that pattern is also by Einar Birkin by Eva. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So that's it. Well, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any plans? I I want to oh, I want to make progress on what I have. I I know myself I'll get overwhelmed. I was texting with Heather though. There are two projects I do want to cast on soon, so I'm going to finish both pairs of socks and then I can cast on new stuff. So I'm going to share um one of the things that, so I want to cast on another sweater. I can't believe I'm saying that because that will be three sweaters on the needle. And I mean, three is nothing. I think I have like six or seven right three now. Three is nothing for y'all, you folks. <laughs> and one of them has to be done by Christmas. So anyway, so a sweater and a hat for sure. And there are tons of other things that I'm trying to stay kind of like, keep it reasonable. So the Sweater is the heirloom jumper. Have you heard of that? It's by uh -huh. um, Fabel Knitwear. So I have a bunch of stuff by her in my queue. I love her aesthetic. Um, and so this one, it, I, I'm thinking I want to make it for a holiday sweater. Uh oh, what am I? I'm messing us up, aren't I? We're recording. No, I'm yeah. So I want to make it for a holiday sweater and so it's knit with fingering weight and um, actually I'm going to share I'm going to show the pattern really quickly okay I was going to pull it up but yeah if you want to share screen that's even better okay well this is already up and and ready so let me talk about <laughs> this first so for the BIPOC knit along I decided that I want to make there are other things on my list that I'm considering um, but this hat pattern, can you see that, Heather? Can you mm -hmm. see that? Yeah. This is um, by Vanessa Smith. It's yeah, I can see it. It's called the mm -hmm. Aslan hat, and that's knit with sport weight. And so I still have some sugar plum circus sport weight, and then I bought that cloud orange sport weight. Mm -hmm. So I'll use one of those. It's a good opportunity to use up the sport weight. And then here's the heirloom jumper. So this is, you all know, oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you know, like, I love the, she has two versions. One has the puffier sleeves. I think this one has a little bit more, the puffier or detail on the sleeves. And then the lace going through the center. I like the high neckline. It's slightly cropped. It's fingering weight and um, mohair. So mm -hmm. I already had, I don't know. I'm going to have to swatch to see. So I'm going to stop my share now. Yeah, it's even though so the Vanessa Smith one is cables, right? And yeah. then the other one is lace, but they have a similar like there's something similar about the way the texture looks, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. too. I mean, you know what you like what you like, right? And what you're drawing. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I have to swatch. Maybe I'll swatch by next episode. I don't know. I don't know how these colors are going to turn out together. But here's what I don't I don't I want to use what I already have. Mm hmm for um, the heirloom jumper, I'm thinking of this yarn. Mm -hmm. So this is the beehive yarn fingering and it has Stellina in it and um, Raven Red with this, because I figured it would tone it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. You all know what this is, right? It's the Bisha Bouche. Yeah. The dark red color. Yeah. So I think that could go well together for that. But I have to see it swatch to see if it tones down or if there's like too much contrast or, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it'll be good too, because that yarn is, it's tonal, but it's like very, there's a wide variation. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that sweater will look better to not have like a striping effect. I think the mohair will bring it together. That's, that's what I'm hoping. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping the mohair will kind of like even it out and mm -hmm. tone down, you know, it'll still be a nice red, but a, a more toned down, deeper red. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. I'll swatch and see. And if not, figure out a different plan. Yeah. Well, I have my plan. So I sat down and I thought, okay, if I, how much time would it actually take me to finish each of these things, right? So I'm like, okay, this sweater, I've got the rest of this yoke and then there's a turtleneck. I bet that would take me about 10 hours to finish that, right? Mm -hmm. So I added it all up of the stuff that I actively have been working on. And I feel like it would take me probably about 60 hours to finish all of this. So I was like, okay, if I knit usually maybe an average of like three hours a day, that easily all of that stuff can be finished by the end of the year. So I'm really trying to stay focused, finish a bunch of these things um, because so much of it is so close to being done now. Yeah. I guess that's the advantage of like doing a little bit on a lot of projects as you get to a point where they're all almost finished. True. I believe in you. I think it's possible. Yeah. If anyone can do it, you can do it. If anyone can do it, I can do it, but we'll see. I might get distracted. I have, I did get some of this yarn in a, actually in a color really similar to your Nanaimo. Um, the City Tweed DK for the Coastal Crop Raglan mm -hmm. uh, by Tiff Nealon. So that pattern came out and I just really like, I've been wanting like a plain sweater, like kind of with that shape. And I really like the details on that and the tweediness. So I did buy yarn for that, but I'm trying to not cast it on until I finish some of this other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I still have my Christmas sweater. I really want to start. So maybe we can start that together. Yeah. We were talking about that. Mm -hmm. So you know, I have me, I don't know. We'll see what happens. So if anyone else out there wants to start a Christmas sweater too close to Christmas with no time to finish it with us, yeah. let us know and we'll do an impossible Christmas sweater fit along. And I mean, I take the plans with a grain of salt too. Yeah. You know, I just really ultimately it's just doing like, however the spirit moves me, that's what I'm going to do. But it's it's fun to chat about and think about and get inspired and pumped up about different patterns and the possibilities, right? So. Yeah. And we've been talking a little bit about some ideas for knit alongs for 2021 also. So yes. maybe in next episode, <laughs> we'll talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, we can preview some of those ideas. Yeah. All right, so I think we're going to end it there. Mm -hmm. right. um, it was great to see everybody again today. <laughs> and um, we're always so excited to share our making with you and to see all of your comments and um, your comments and projects inspire us as well. So please continue posting in our Ravelry group and commenting and we'll see you in about three weeks. All right, bye everyone. Bye everyone. Okay. Hey everyone. So after we stopped recording, we realized that we both have this uh, avocado stitch marker from La Serena Tejera shop and we got super excited. <laughs> we didn't even know that we both had it. So we decided to pop back in and show you guys. Um, and also if you want to see a glimpse of what the Montrealer is looking like. <laughs> this is, yeah. Hey, why not? This is where I am. I split for the sleeves and have a couple of inches done. All yeah. Right. So okay. if you want one of those, go visit her shop, La Serena Tejera shop. It's one of my favorite places to get stitch markers. Yes. Lots of beautiful stuff.